Hello guys, welcome back to Civil Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily civil engineering videos. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss the difference between the joist and beam. So, I will explain the difference with the help of an example, so it will be more easy to understand. So, beam is basically a flexural horizontal member used to take the bending stresses. Used to take the bending stresses. So it is a flexural member and the joist if you look to the behavior of joist so it is also a flexural member used to take the bending stresses in a structure so both are the both members are basically are flexural members flexural member means that they can take the flexural stresses or bending stresses but where is the difference between them so the main difference is that beams are usually in bigger cross section they are in bigger cross section cross section while joists are mainly in smaller cross section so how so let me take this a slab we see here a slab this is a slab basically and here we see the four columns are provided in order to take the load from the slab and to transfer it to the foundation. So now the joists are provided along the length of the slab here in small numbers. For example, like in this case, in this way. So they are very really small in cross section. And the purpose is their purpose is to take the bending stresses. And now they are provided in order to avoid the column otherwise the engineer can also provide the column here but to avoid this column because it is not looking good so architecture mostly try to avoid this column so in order to avoid this type of column in the middle of the slab what we do or in the middle of the hall what we what the engineers do they provide small beams along the length of the slab so now these small beams is, are known as the joist. They are really small in cross section. So their behavior is same as like beams, but they are small in cross section. I just want to delete here the column. Now the beam is a big member and is provided here in the middle of the slab to transfer the, all the load from the small joist into the big beam. So this is provided here in the middle. This is known as the beam which transfers the load from the joist, take the load from the slab, joist and then into the other beams. So now if I look to the load transfer mechanism, how the load will how the load transfer mechanism will take place here. So basically first the load is acting on the slab and then from slab the load goes to the joists, small cross section members. And then from joist the load is transferred to the beam you see here from from the load then transferred into the beam here this this horizontal member and then this beam transferred the load here this beam transferred the load here to this beam to this beam to the edge beam to the outer beam so and then this load is transferred here to the columns here to the four columns and then the load is transferred to the column and then from column the load is transferred to the footing or foundation so here are different kind of footings depending on the design for example it might be a single footing individual footing isolated footing or um, strip footing or maybe pile foundation it depends on the load acting on the column or the bearing capacity of the soil so this is the load transfer mechanism in which the load is transferred from the joist to the beam so I just want to mention here that the load is transferred from the joist to the beam so this is also one of the difference between the joist and beam so in a, in a conclusion joist has a beam but in smaller cross section in a structure member beam is a bending flexion member like a joist but they are always in a bigger cross section so hope you guys understand and don't forget to subscribe our channel for daily civil engineering videos. Thank you for watching our video.